uh, battalion commander in charge of our organization that's here today. Um, they're here in Trinidad for the uh, duration of our trip. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for welcoming us to your country. This has been an amazing opportunity for us to come down here. Um, you know, um, our crew chief's here. This is Sergeant First Class Neoff. He's our senior crew chief with us today. He'll be conducting the training. Ultimately, what we would like to do is get you in the aircraft, fly a pattern, and we want to get to the point where when we land, you guys are able to jump out, provide a 360 security around the um, You guys will hop out. You guys are going to be in the seatbelts the entire time. Uh, lap belts first, then the shoulders. It's just a turn lock. And we're going to practice that before we get, uh, get out of the aircraft. Just a pro walk around the sort of thing. Um, ear pro, eye pro the entire time. When you guys get out, you're going to jump out. I'm assuming I'm not sure you guys' uh, tactics get down. Just five, take two or three steps, get down. Full security. And we're going to break into two groups. So, split up have you guys one. I'll take this group on this fire aircraft. And somebody can come over here. Uh, got well, you guys, we have extra. Okay. Chalk one. First chalk, first team. Follow me. Chalk two. We'll go with that. Uh, sorry, first guy's being off. Okay, I have the air first. The minute 30 uh, and 10 second calls out to, so you know to let your team know. It'll be hard to hear. I'm not sure if you guys have a hand signals you guys use. Roger. Comps? Okay. So we'll have the team leader up front. The rest of you guys can stack in how you'd like to. We'll practice getting in the aircraft, putting on the seat belts, and you guys can get your seat and arrangement down pat as well, okay? So we coming into the aircraft, we'll come in. Team lead, front row. Everyone else follow in. Weapons pointed downward. All clear. Sign up. There you go. Try to have like one of those expandable oh. tethers. It's, a, it's easier to move around a little bit. There you go. That way, remember where your seats are, keep your same seats. So when we rehearse it again, we'll come in quickly, get in there, try and get as buckled as you can, and we'll practice that. On that side, you guys are doing the same thing. About where he's standing at, so about one, two, three. So you're going to jump. One, two, three. Down, take security. So center. Front and rear, that way you have 360 of security. Other side, however you guys are broken up in half, buckles off. So this is the problem. So one at a time, you gotta go out, I'm so, I'm right? Gonna, I'm gonna tell you. So you go the back seat, then this seat, then the front seat. That way you guys aren't trying to get out all at the same time. So back. So you the opposite side, same concept. Basically, I guess, start your security at and behind that rear wheel. In the line, hand on, you get the squeeze, and then you work your way in, and that's true, and you all stay together. Because at night, you don't want to lose somebody, and lose them into the tail rotor, or you walk to the front of the aircraft, and this way it'll keep you all safe. Same order you guys have boarded the men before, same seat. So the lead can work their way off to the side, and can count their guys in if they want. That way they have accountability. So, sir, your lead? Yep, you're good. So, if you pull on the little tabs here, mm -hmm. and then the, put the metal one away, that's how you loosen it. Just a little, little tab. There you go. Oh, sorry. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want? Uh, Alright, you guys ready? Let's go. So we're gonna, you guys are all tracking the plan. Load you guys up, start the engines, we're live.
after some more start. Walk your side through. Hey Brown, so yeah. at this point, all we're doing is making whatever stuff. Now come in. We're gonna all stay in. All right, keep going. Keep wiggling. Keep wiggling. <laughs> Tool to install cotter pins, you 
will be a jillionaire.
Major James Letts. I'm the executive officer for this mission. And right now I'm overseeing the reassembly of these three UA-60 Black Hawk helicopters. We flew these aircraft uh, on a C-17, originally from Wilmington. We transported these helicopters via Strat Air. We flew them on a C-17. Originally we departed from Wilmington, had a short layover in Dover, and then arrived here at Piarco International Airport in Trinidad. Transportation was an experience. Uh, it's good for training. It's uh, a mission that we have that we have not uh, trained on in some time. So it took some uh, remembering as we went through the process. But overall, it was a very successful mission. And uh, we arrived here with three serviceable aircraft ready to go. Uh, this is an exciting mission because we get a lot of benefits from it. Uh, there was a lot of planning that was involved in coordination with uh, Southcom and the embassy here in Trinidad and the actual training involved with transporting aircraft, folding blades, unfolding blades, test flying them. That provides us uh, a fantastic opportunity. Uh, the soldiers will also have uh, a chance to see a part of the world that we normally wouldn't get to see and meet people um, outside of the United States. And uh, the people of Trinidad are very nice. They're uh, very welcoming and uh, great hosts. And so that's a, that's a great chance for everyone on this mission to, to see the culture of Trinidad, uh, the people, and the food. Major James Letts, I'm the executive officer for this mission. And right now, I'm overseeing the reassembly of three U-860 Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, well, it, it takes a lot of hands, you know what I mean? A lot of coordination, a lot of making sure that we uh, are doing the right things at the right time. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts when we fold blades, so removing those parts is just as uh, difficult as installing them. So it takes a lot of eyes, a lot of effort, and um, a lot of coordination, I would say. Huh? Learning how to conduct maintenance when you don't have all the bits and pieces that you normally have. So working with what you have um, and uh, making, the best, you know, making the best out of your situation. Also being able to uh, teach lower enlisted and the, uh, the nationals that are here, the Trin Trinidadians, um, show them you know, a little bit of how we operate, you know what I mean? I think it's a good way to uh, not show force, but show our expertise and knowledge in what we do and the reason why we do it well. Um, good afternoon, I am 31190 Corporal Ramdan ING. Um, yes, in terms of the guys that we have here, the U.S. soldiers here, um, they were very pleasant, um, very, very um, polite. Speaking to them was very easy in terms of if I ask anything, they would respond accordingly. They would, they would um, try to answer me as best as they could. Um, the experience with them is, is actually really good for me, personally. Um, I also like how they actually do maintenance. They're very professional with what they do so far by just by me observing. Um, some of the simple practices that I, I see that they are doing is very similar to how we would do maintenance as well. I, th I think there, there's a lot of benefit from it. Um, probably if they could probably be here a little more often. Um, so we could get from some kind of relationship between the US and Trinidad and Tobago. And who knows, it could benefit both of us hopefully in, in some part of the future. But um, me personally, it would be nice to actually be able to do some sort of maintenance with them if possible, probably in the future. Well, you know, the simple thing is if it's just to observe like how they do work, how they work on the aircraft. So currently, um, I'll, if I take a few steps back, um, well, my personal information, well, I joined the Air Guard since 2011, right? So I currently have 13 years service. Out of that 13 years service, I have been in aviation roughly just over 10 years here. Um, so I, I would have been one of the one of the um, persons who would have started the training program um, under Bristol, right? So Bristol Caribbean Limited um, formulated a training plan for the Air Guard personnel here to be trained and to be um, able to write and set the license at CA. So I would have had some of a lot of experience when we were operational in terms of being active in maintenance, working alongside engineers and being able to actually do maintenance <clears throat> as a trainee here. So that was that's just a little bit about me and my experience. So roughly I have just over 10 years in aviation 
looking? My name is uh, Sergeant Reginald Young. I'm a 15 Tango with the, the 238th Aviation Support Battalion. My name is Sergeant Reginald Young Jr. I'm a 15 Tango with the 3rd of the 238th Aviation Support Battalion. Uh, right now we're in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, uh, my main part in this mission was to uh, help facilitate the folding and unfolding of the aircraft, uh, the loading and unloading of the C-17, uh, as well as help to cultivate the experience of the junior enlisted soldiers. Honestly, the first of all, the hospitality was absolutely amazing. Uh, the people here are awesome. Uh, the mission itself was uh, one of the first for me. Uh, we were here to uh, cultivate the relationship with the with the, the military forces down here, and I think that we achieved that uh, outstandingly, as well as to build community relations with the local people and to inspire the, the youth to uh, be part of the aviation team here in Trinidad. Uh, man, there were a lot of good parts. First of all, I'm a foodie, so I love to eat, and the food was amazing. Uh, but I think the most memorable thing was uh, to watch the UTT students, to watch the locals, uh, you know, watch our Blackhawks land, take off, so on and so forth, and be so inspired and be, you know, uh, in awe and uh, you know that's something we kind of take advantage of because I, once, I'm also a federal technician so I see this happen every day uh, but it really put things in perspective for me and helped to remind me that you know our job is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, I would say you know this this mission has been planned for for months and months and months uh, but we got really close to leaving and things kind of got scrapped but so to for for us to pull together and you know within a few weeks this mission and to execute outstandingly uh as well as with the help of the trinidad locals and the, the, the armed forces down here uh it, it shows that you know it shows the resiliency of the the national guard the u.s army as well as the ability to you know react on the fly and i think that's one of the uh, part of the major things that make us a great organization. Absolutely, uh, I think that mainly on the, the UTT students, the UTT aviation students, I think we had a major impact. I think we showed them that uh, anybody can aspire to be an aviator as long as you stay focused, work hard, and be passionate about your craft, you can exceed, you can succeed and excel. I just want to thank, I want to thank my wife, I want to thank my family for uh, supporting me in all my endeavors uh, because without them I wouldn't be able to come down here and do these great things. So I appreciate you guys and I love you. My name is Staff Sergeant Scott Stewart. I am a 15 Papa uh, Flight Operations NCO. My role here was to uh, identify uh, passengers, material, and equipment for each aircraft on each mission and each leg of, uh, of their flights as they did the mission throughout the island. Easily my most memorable, memorable moment was uh, the way that the, uh, the entire task force came together as a, as a team. We maintained uh, positive uh, motivation and ex uh, executed every single task that came up. Uh, there was a lot of changes and a lot of um, add-ons to the mission. And without hesitation, everybody jumped right in. I was absolutely impressed with both the senior leadership and the most junior enlisted soldier. Uh, we acted together as one team, and that's the memory that I'm going to take uh, take home with me. The one thing that was that I the, that I was taken taken by surprise was uh, the interactions with the Trinidad soldiers and the Trinidad uh, people. We were so very well received here and uh, they were so interested in our capabilities and our equipment and just the lifestyle. Uh, during our MWR day, uh, soldiers and um, students from the UTT uh, came with us uh, just because of the relationships that we had been building. Uh, they wanted to continue that. Uh, they, were, um, they were excited to see us and they were just uh, such a surprise to be so, um, so part of this mission. Yeah, there were several challenges, lots and lots of changes 
lots and lots of long, long days. I didn't anticipate the, uh, the extent to which the long days would wear on uh, soldiers. Um, but again, everyone maintained a positive uh, attitude and motivation throughout. Uh, most of our days were tw uh, over 12 hours, and um, in this heat, that's a lot. Uh, but uh, everybody stayed focused the entire time and uh, executed the mission. I, it could not have gone any better. It absolutely could not have gone any better. Uh, in total, I think we moved upwards of 200 passengers uh, over four days, and um, every single person had a hand in making that happen. Was it the most fun? Uh, yes, yes it was the most fun. It was also the most challenging, uh, the most difficult, and uh, it, it's been the, one of the highlights of my entire military career. I can't wait to get home. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm Specialist Brandon Gale. Um, my favorite part of being here was probably going to Maracas and spending the day at the beach and then going down the avenue. Um, one of the big things I learned while being here was preparing aircraft for shipment and taking things like the stabilator apart and working on the rotor head, things we don't get to normally do on an M-Day drill weekend. So I certainly learned a lot while I was down here and I'm glad I was able to be a part of the experience. This would definitely be by far top AT for me. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get another one like this, so grateful to be here and, and happy I was able to come. So it was interesting getting to watch another military, see how they do things and their SOP and things like that. You know, we got to see how different it was from ours and we learned a lot from each other and it's definitely, you know, something you don't see every day. So it was a good thing to be a part of. I was a um, Black Hawk maintainer, so my job was to keep the aircraft up and running and to prepare them for shipment and get them off the C-17 and get them up in the air. I'd say it was a huge success, um, you know. We, we came here, we got done what we knew we wanted to get done, and, and we're all leaving in one piece, so that's a success for me. Lieutenant Colonel Tom Emerson, I'm the Task Force Commander of Task Force Aviation, Delaware Army National Guard. So we came down here to conduct annual training in conjunction with strengthening our partnership with Trinidad and Tobago with the State Partnership Program. So the best part of the mission here was really just getting the opportunity to interact not only with the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, but also all the local civilians that we had the opportunity to meet. On several occasions, we had the opportunity to go to different locations and interact with the locals. Um, we were based out of the University of Trinidad Aviation School, and every day when we returned from our mission, we were greeted with probably 50 students who wanted to uh, take a look at our aircraft, learn from us, ask questions. So that was a great experience. We built some friendships there. And then also uh, we had the opportunity to go to a small town in the southern part of the island that doesn't typically uh, get visitors. So with us bringing in uh, Blackhawks, that was a big event for them. And we had anywhere from 800 to 1,000 visitors from the local population come and look at our aircraft to include uh, elementary school students that came on field trips um, to just people that were in town when we landed and they wanted to come check it out. And it was a great opportunity and everybody welcomed us with open arms and it really made us understand why we were here and, um, and, and just reaffirmed why we wear the uniform every day. And it was a great opportunity, great experience. So we also had the opportunity to work with uh, all entities that fall under the Ministry of National Security here in Trinidad and Tobago. It included uh, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Force, uh, their Defense Force, the Air Guard, Army, um, and it was all a great positive experience where we were able to collaborate, share best practices, train together, and ultimately just build the, uh, build the relationship that we've had and just made it even stronger. This mission's been a complete success. We accomplished every goal that we set out to do and even exceeded that by being able to just interact with the local population. Um, I think we far exceeded our own expectations on what we were, we were coming down here to do. And it, um, and it showed every time we got to interact with somebody new. Um, it just, it was a great, great thing and 100% uh, mission success. This group of soldiers that came down here um, was a group of 22 that uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances we had to pretty much revamp the entire mission due to a delay in timing and within less than one month we were able to get 22 soldiers together come up with a plan execute that plan and turn this into an extremely successful event hey i'm sergeant maurice gaddis i'm a 15 tango uh 60 repair uh, crew chief with the first of the 126 aviation 
my part in this mission, uh, I assisted in unloading the aircraft when they got here. I'm a crew member, that's my primary duty. So as a crew chief on the helicopters as we flew around Trinidad. My most memorable moment probably would be meeting the students at the University of Trinidad and Tobago uh, Aviation Campus. Um, that was an unexpected part of the mission, um, but it probably was my favorite part. Um, a lot of young people who are very interested in aviation, who have the same passion for aviation that we do, and it kind of reminded me why I love doing this job. Uh, I've been in this unit for about eight years, and I think this is probably my favorite annual training I've ever done. Um, definitely my favorite mission. I've been in this unit for about eight years, and I think this is probably my favorite annual training uh, that I've ever done. Um, it meant a lot to be able to interact with the Trinidad Defense Force uh, troops, get to fly them on our helicopters, um, share some best practices with them, and even the things that were unexpected, uh, meeting students, meeting children, getting to introduce them to the helicopter and to aviation in general. Um, I think the partnership is awesome, and I hope that it continues for a very long time. I mean, the training value we got out of this mission uh, was awesome. It's something we don't get to do too very often. Folding helicopters, transporting them on, uh, on C-17s and C-130s, um, flying in an area we don't typically fly in, in a brand new country. A lot of that stuff is invaluable experience. Um, even things beyond uh, folding the aircraft and transporting them. And then on top of the things like folding the aircraft and the flying uh, and sharing best practices, there are things you can't really quantify, like just meeting people from a different country um, and, and being able to interact with them, uh, learning the culture and shared values. Um, those are things you can't really put into a training PowerPoint, but there's a lot of value there. All right, I'm CW4 Neil Moody. I am in the 238th and I'm a UH-60 standardization instructor pilot. Uh, so I guess they brought me here to be um, a instructor um, to make sure we're following standards while flying and just uh, also as my experience as an actual pilot. I would say a couple things that really stood out to me. Um, one was just a training flight around the north side of the island. Um, really uninhabited, almost um, rainforest level jungle leading to cliffs that drop down into the Caribbean. And it was absolutely beautiful. The whole flight was um, really just incredibly, incredible uh, from the standpoint of natural beauty. Uh, and then the second was um, our trip down to Cedros and I expected some children to come up to the aircraft and ask a couple questions and then leave. I didn't expect the entire town and hundreds of children to come with uh, incredible warmth and enthusiasm and to be bombarded with their excitement and their questions for three straight hours. It was, uh, it was overwhelming, exhausting, and probably the most fun uh, that I had the whole time I was here. It's hard, so judging success, um, you know, I think we have to measure our success here in Trinidad a couple ways. Uh, internally, uh, the small group of people that came with us, I think got invaluable experience um, in which we couldn't have found stateside. Being able to move and deploy our um, expertise here is really challenging and the, the young people that did it would have never had that experience before. So they're in a position to um, teach other people how to do it in the future. Uh, as far as uh, with Trinidad, I think that um, our relation, we started building a relationship. I don't think this is a finished product. Uh, I think we had great success when we met and worked with them, uh, but really it's just the foundation um, that needs to be built upon in the future. As far as a lasting impact, I think the first step always has to be made. Uh, the trust built with the individuals that you work with here, um, the kind of building of relationships, and there's always that feeling out of a new partner. And I think a lot of that was accomplished and it cleared the way for us to come down and maybe do more meaningful operations in the future. Absolutely. For me, a big part of being in the military is adventure, and this was, uh, a, above all things, an adventure. It was, it was a new place with new people, um, and all of that's exciting, and it can build excitement for 
all of our young crews and keep them keep them in the organization if they think uh, this sort of uh, adventure is on the horizon for them. My name is Sergeant Alex Zambrano. I'm with the 126 Aviation. I'm a 68 Whiskey Fox 2 flight paramedic. Uh, our role here as flight paramedics in the uh, Trinidad and Tobago mission was to augment the aviation mission, show capabilities uh, that we have in the state of Delaware, how we can help uh, the nation in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as provide medical support internally to our guys and uh, do some outreach for the medical uh, division here um, to help them out as well. Awesome. So while we were here, we had the opportunity to meet with some paramedics uh, that work for the TTDF uh, and they were able to give them some pointers and advice in their mission uh, to start a medevac program both ground and air uh, as well as increase their medical capabilities for the country uh, both military and civilian side. We're able to, to sit down with them um, and help them out in their planning uh, and operationally advance uh, what they're doing uh, for their country. My biggest takeaways from this mission uh, was very humbling uh, seeing what these guys are doing down here, guys and gals, what they're doing down here, uh, overcoming all odds, and uh, the passion that they had for serving their country, their community. Um, we're definitely going to take back a lot, of the, a lot of that with us. Back. This was a very humbling experience being down here in Trinidad and Tobago, seeing the passion that these guys have uh, to serve their country and their community uh, against all odds. Um, they're, they're, you know, they really care about what they do. They really care about making a positive uh, influence, uh, positive impact. Um, on themselves and the people around them. Uh, and that's definitely something that we're going to take back with us to Delaware. Um, I think we all had a great time. Um, and we, we were taking uh, as much back with us as, as we gave to them as far as uh, exchange of information. I'd like to extend a personal thank you um, to the TGDF and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say we're very grateful for the hospitality um, and the lessons that we learned along the way uh, coming down here. Um, you know, it, again, it was a really humbling experience, and um, I think we, both sides took a lot away from it. Hello, I'm Master Sergeant Michael Zako. I'm from the 166 Logistics Readiness Squadron, and I am down here as the Mobility Force Inspector, as the Air Force Liaison. I am down here to help our Delaware National Guard Aviation Unit exfil out of town and back home to Newcastle. Uh, one of my favorite experiences down here was getting the chance to work with the Delaware National Guard. We work within the same state, but it's rare that we have the opportunities to work together to accomplish a mission. So I enjoyed bonding with them, understanding how they do business, and, and enjoying their camaraderie. I enjoyed the Army and the Air working together to accomplish a mission. Uh, it was great that we were able to come down here do training with the host nation, get some training for ourselves for future conflicts, and to achieve a goal. As an Air National Guardsman, this was a great opportunity for me to come down and hone my skills of, of expeditionary style mobility. Uh, usually I only get this type of hands-on training in theater. So to be able to replicate that experience, those skills that I need to perform, uh, it was great to come down here and, and hone them skills.